Hello and welcome to a video presentation on solving equations containing percents. Here's what you'll learn. How to solve one-step equations containing percents. The goal in solving equations is to find a solution. If your equation contains a variable, a letter, you're trying to solve for the value of that variable. To solve for a variable, you must isolate the variable. That means we want to get the variable or the letter all by itself on one side of the equation. Your equation should end up looking like this. The variable equals a number. For example, p equals 16. Now this lesson will demonstrate two ways of solving equations containing percents. In method number one, we'll translate the words in the problem into an equation and then solve for the missing value. In method number two, we'll use a formula, replacing words and symbols in the formula with numbers. Then we'll solve for the missing value. Let's start with method number one, translating words into an equation. 10 is what percent of 50? We can create an equation using the words in the problem. First, the words 10 is mean 10 equals. So let's start writing our equation by putting down 10 equals. Next, the words what percent indicate an unknown percentage. Let's use p in our equation for that unknown percent. Finally, of 50 means multiply by 50. So there's our equation. Now we have an equation we can use to solve for the missing percent p. We can cancel out the 50 with p by dividing it by 50. Of course we also have to divide the other side by 50 as well to keep our equation balanced. Now on the left, 10 divided by 50 is 0 0.2. And on the right, the 50's are going to cancel leaving us with just our variable p. Now that's not our answer because our answer is in decimal form and we need it as a percent. Converting a decimal to a percent involves multiplying by 100. So let's multiply 0 0.2 by 100. Multiplying any number by 100 just moves the decimal point in the number two places to the right. So p is going to equal 20 or 20%. 20 in other words, 10 is 20% of 50. 45 is 20% of what number? Again, we can create an equation using the words in the problem. First, the words 45 is mean 45 equals. So we'll start by writing down 45 equals. Next is 20%. Let's go ahead and add that to our equation. Finally, of means multiply. So let's go ahead and put a multiplication symbol in there. And what number means we have an unknown number. Let's go ahead and use n then for our variable or the unknown number. Now in equations you want to convert percents to their decimal equivalents. We don't want to leave 20% like this. We know percent means per hundred, so we're going to divide 20 by 100 to get the decimal equivalent of 0 0.2. So let's rewrite the equation, substituting the decimal for our percent. Now you'll have 45 equals 0 0.2 times n. Now we have an equation we can use to solve for the missing number n. We can cancel out the 0 0.2 with n by dividing it by 0 0.2. And of course we have to divide the other side by 0 0.2 as well to keep our equation balanced. Now on the left, 45 divided by 0 0.2 is 225. And on the right, the 0 0.2's will cancel out, leaving us with just our variable n. So 45 is 20% of 225. Now, many percentage problems can be solved using a formula. A formula is just a group of words or symbols in the form of an equation that allows you to solve for certain mathematical values. 
Here is a formula we can use to solve equations containing percents. This formula is read as is over of equals percent over 100. Having a formula to help solve problems is fun and it makes them much easier. Because with a formula, you simply replace the words or the symbols in the formula with corresponding numbers from the problem, and then you solve for what's missing. This particular formula is a proportion, and it requires four numbers. One number for the numerator and denominator of each fraction. One number, the 100, is already provided in the formula. It never changes. But we are missing numbers for the words is, and of, and of course the percent symbol. If we're given just two of those three missing numbers, we can solve this proportion for the third number using cross products. Let's look at an example. 30 is what percent of 75? And I'm going to use the formula method, so let's start by writing our percentage formula off to the side for reference. We'll write down is over of equals percent over 100. Now we're going to set up a similar proportion, leaving the words blank for now. That means we're going to set up two ratios that are equal to each other. And of course the only number we know so far is 100 from the formula. It goes in the denominator of the second ratio. Now we'll replace two of the three empty spots with numbers in a moment then we'll be able to solve for the missing value. Now let's go ahead and read the question one part at a time. It starts with 30 is. That means the value of is in our formula is going to be 30. Continuing on, the next part of the question reads what percent? Now that means we're looking for the value of our percent symbol. So let's use a variable, and I'll use p this time, for that number. Finally, continuing on, the last part of the question reads of 75. Well, that means the value for of in our formula is going to be 75. Now we can solve for x by cross-multiplying. We know that 75 times p is 75p, and 30 times 100 is 3,000. Next, we need to cancel out the 75 with p by dividing both sides by 75. Now on the left, the 75's will cancel, leaving us with just our variable p. And on the right, 3000 divided by 75 is 40. So p is 40, or 30 is 40% 40 of 75. 17.6 is 40% of what number? Again, let's start by writing our percentage formula off to the side for reference. I'll write down is over of equals percent over 100. Now set up a similar proportion again, leaving the words blank for now. We can put in the 100 in the denominator. It's the only number we know so far, and it comes from the formula. We're going to replace two of the three empty spots with numbers in just a moment. Then we'll be able to solve for the missing value. Now let's read the question one part at a time. It starts with 17.6 is. So that means the value of is in our formula is going to be 17.6. Continuing on, the next part of the question reads 40%. So we're going to replace the percent symbol now with the number 40. And finally, the last part of the question reads, of what number? That means the value of of in our formula is unknown. So let's use a variable x this time for that number. Now we can solve for x by cross multiplying. x times 40 gives us 40x and 17.6 times 100 is 1,760. Next, we need to cancel out the 40 with x by dividing both sides by 40. On the left, the 40's will cancel, leaving us with just our variable x. And on the right, 
the 1760 divided by 40 is 44. So x equals 44, which means 17.6 is 40% 40 of 44. Now let's work a word problem. On a recent math test, Peter correctly answered 22 of 25 problems. If Peter scores at least 90%, he would have an A. Did Peter get an A? Well, let's start by writing our percentage formula off to the side. It's going to be useful to use in this problem. So I'll write down is over of equals percent over 100. Now set up a similar proportion again, leaving the words blank for now. Of course, we know we can add the 100 in the denominator of the second fraction. It's the only number we know so far. We're going to replace two of the three empty spots with numbers in just a moment. Then we can solve for what's missing. Even though a percent is given in this problem, we have a 90% listed in the problem. That's not the percent we're going to use in this formula. What we're going to do is compare Peter's percentage when we figure it out with 90% to see if he got an A. So it's Peter's percent that's unknown. So let's go ahead and replace the percent symbol now with a variable and we'll use T this time. Now we have two numbers left in the problem. We have a 22 and a 25. So they're going to go in the numerator and denominator of our first ratio. But the question is which number goes where? Well let's rephrase this part of the problem. We could say Peter's score is 22 out of 25. Now it's clear that our is is going to be 22. And our of is going to be 25. Here's another way to look at setting up this first ratio. We're looking for t, which represents Peter's percentage on the test. Since Peter's percentage is in the numerator of the second ratio, Peter's score has to be in the numerator of the first ratio. So all of Peter's score information goes in the top of both fractions. That means possible score out of total number of points information is going to go in the denominators. The highest score Peter could get as a percentage is 100. The highest number of points he could get on the test is 25 out of 25 problems. Now we can solve for t by cross multiplying. 25 times t is 25t, and 22 times 100 is 2,200. Next, we need to cancel out the 25 that's with t by dividing both sides by 25. That will keep our equation balanced. On the left now, the 25's cancel, leaving just the t. And on the right, 2,200 divided by 25 gives us 88. That means Peter scored 88% on this test, just short of the 90% he needed for an A. So Peter did not get an A on this test. Now let me provide you with one final thought on solving equations containing percents. When we use the translate words method, any percentages in our equation get converted to a decimal. And when solving for a percent in the translate words method, the answer will be in a decimal and we have to convert that back to a percent. However, when using the formula method, there's no need to convert any percents to decimals or decimals to percents. The formula automatically adjusts for any necessary conversions. So please take note of the method you're using. You may make a conversion when it isn't necessary or you may not make a conversion when one is necessary. Congratulations, you've learned how to solve one-step equations containing percents.